Nadine, smart, thoughtful, classy, loving, and rock solid. Nadine was a delightful force of nature. Born at home in this house in Forbes, North Carolina to Oscar and Floyd Whitson, Nadine was the fifth of six children. Before her are O.C., Louise, Kathleen, and Bill. Her baby brother, Bob, was born nine years after Nadine. My mom spent her formative years in the Blue Ridge Mountains in the small North Carolina community known as Green Mountain. Her older siblings were gone from the house by the time she was 10. Nadine's father, Oscar, suffered a stroke when she was very young. After that, he was unable to help around the house. Nadine's mother was busy with the newborn and caring for her ailing husband. Thus, it fell on my mom to assume the adult responsibilities of chopping wood, managing the lawn, and taking care of the house. On her own since 16, mom graduated from high school and after one year at King College, moved to Fort Worth to live with her sister Kathleen and family. Mom enjoyed exploring the world beyond the Smoky Mountains, but always kept a soft spot in her heart for her home. Once in Fort Worth, she got a job at Southwestern Drug, where she made lots of friends and enjoyed her independence. In 1963, after five years in Fort Worth, Nadine accepted an offer with Braniff Airlines in Alexandria, Virginia. One of the great benefits of working for an airline was free plane travel, a perk she enjoyed immensely. I remember mom telling me the story of how she went to Scandinavia on a four-day weekend for less than $50 for the whole trip. Her travels also included visits to France, Portugal, Norway, Finland, and various places in South America. She had little money in her pocket, but a huge desire to explore the world. She was curious and enjoyed learning about history, culture, food, and people. From an early age, mom had a strong sense of self and how the world works. She had uncommonly good sense and good problem solving skills on her side. That was evident when James Whiteley asked her on a date. She told him no first, but after a lengthy conversation, she realized that Dad was no ordinary man. Dad recalls the first time they met. Nadine was the tall, dazzling, redhead host of an airline party celebrating the end of a strike. She was very busy, and I actually spent more time talking to another redhead at the party. But I could not get Nadine out of my mind. The next night, I called her for a date, beer and pizza. It took 45 minutes, but she finally said yes. By the end of the evening, we were totally smitten. I knew she would do to ride the river with. Mom loved to tell the story that she knew James was the one on their first date. She says that after dinner, they sat and chatted in her apartment. They fell asleep talking, sitting side by side on the couch. She woke up with her head on his shoulder and in that moment knew that he was the one. They married nine months later on June 3, 1967 in Alexandria, Virginia. They honeymooned in Puerto Rico and in Panama. Nadine and James were married for 43 glorious years. Their love affair was special and serves as a great example to all of us that love is good and love is kind. Many of James and Nadine's nieces and nephews saw their love as a beacon of what marriage was intended to be. Mom and Dad moved to Austin shortly after their marriage. She continued to work for Braniff for just a little while. During that time, they made the most of first-class travel benefits by exploring Brazil, Argentina, and Peru. She worked briefly at the local travel agent before having me in June of 1969. I was born 22 months later on March 4, 1971. Happy with their American dream life, Mom enjoyed raising us and building a happy, healthy home with Dad. Shanna, now a mother herself, recently mused about how the apples, or should I say peaches, have not fallen far from the tree. As I'm sitting around the family kitchen table recently, peeling peaches to put in the freezer, as my mother has always done, I began thinking how I'm turning into her. Some women may be appalled at that thought, 
but as I inch a little closer to 40 each day, I think about what a wonderful life we both have and how much she has taught me. I feel grateful to have such a wonderful mom who has encouraged me to be the me I want to be. The peaches I was peeling were homegrown. Mom planted that tree, loved it, nurtured it, and watched it grow, just like she did my sister and me. If you've ever looked at a homegrown peach, you'll know they are soft and fuzzy on the outside, usually with a few blemishes and bruises that they picked up along the way. The inside is sweet and tangy and has a wonderful smell that engulfs the senses. In the middle of all that goodness is a hard seed that looks like a map, filled with dips and valleys and the resulting wisdom. This is where the meat of the peach attaches, at the core, which holds everything around it together. Mom was solid at her core. To many, she was and will always be our true north or home base, a person of extraordinary integrity and character and someone to count on to give you the best advice and moral support. Mom was not a delicate flower. She was saucy, sassy, and direct. She had a definite opinion about everything, which is how she got the nickname B1. And you know, when she sets her mind to it, you're simply better off either getting out of the way or joining forces with her than to argue. Among some of the most important lessons she taught us have been generosity, the importance of self-respect, friendship, and grace. A true Renaissance woman, she was a loving wife, great mom, loyal friend, farmer, partner, entrepreneur, adult 4-H leader, community activist, cook, gardener, fisherwoman, neighbor, domino player, philosopher, and problem solver. She could be tough as nails, get dirty and outwork the best of them, and still be feminine, soft, and graceful. We did not always agree, telling each other, you are entitled to your incorrect opinion, but always resolving issues quickly. Nadine's life is a great testament to what living is all about. She brought vigor, joy, common sense, and compassion to all she did. My sweet mom had a great sense of humor. She believed life's supposed to be joyful. One of her favorite mottos was, the world is full of wrens, be a red bird. She was a pro at making ordinary things, moments or occasions into happy memories. She looked for the good and the delight in the simplest of things. She loved spreading beauty and laughter in the most unexpected places. One time she raised ducks for release in the Fleurville Park so that the walkers could enjoy them. She also collected poppy seeds from time to time, and as she'd drive to town, she'd hold her hand out the window full of seeds, allowing the wind to spread them in hopes that they might decorate the local roadside. When she had a bounty of zinnias, she'd cut them and make bouquets and leave them at the front desk of local nursing homes with strict instructions to give them to people who had the least visitors. She used to tell me, Nisha, you never know what seems like the simplest kindness to you can mean the world to someone else. 